In today's video, we talk about training to failure. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com coming to you on Monday morning and uh, we have some stuff to discuss. Had a couple uh, conversations this last week and I think I have some exciting news to share with you guys and hopefully you'll be on board. So all of you are familiar with the video I did last week. Hopefully you are on the new publication done by a few of my good friends very applicable to what I do as a coach and I'm going to feel it's going to be very applicable to many of you out there that are interested in kind of the science that goes into this evidence-based approach but there's so much research out there that doesn't directly apply but gets used so three people that I highly respect Dr. Mike Zordos, Eric Helms, and Greg Knuckles have come out with the monthly application of strength sport um, where they're going to be reviewing research and uh, so far, I have been amazingly impressed with the articles. So I'm going to show you the table of contents for this month. These are the table of contents of articles for this month's issue. Now, the first issue was available for free. Now it is going to be a monthly subscription. However, I have some cool news. So I have a link for your monthly subscription. And while there's lots of people that are going to have links, I would like you to use my link if you're going to be interested in purchasing this. And here's why. I get a kickback. All the money that you spend on your monthly subscriptions, part of that will go to me. However, I don't want your money. Just like the core nutritional stuff, I don't want that going back to me. I didn't do the work. These are scientists that have done this work, that have put these studies together, and then also they're being reviewed by people of science. And so, while I love that community, I do not yet consider myself a scientist of that nature. So what I'm going to do is donate all that money. So I just got off the phone with Dr. Bill Campbell of the University of South Florida who runs up the exercise science department. Um, and I'm taking a class with Bill this summer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give any money, any proceeds that I get from this um, subscription-based platform for my affiliate links, my dog is barking, I am going to give it to University of South Florida, and uh, specifically the Physique Enhancement Lab where they're doing some really cool stuff. So now that we know that, let's just get right into the discussion today uh, about today's article. And so I'll give you a couple screen captures from the article. Now again, this is a subscription. So I'm not going to give you all the information. I'm just gonna do a review because basically what I would like to do is garner interest in some of these issues and hopefully uh, you know we can give back to the scientific community and get some great information out there so if you know people that would be interested in this please share so let's talk about training to failure sorry for the change in location guys my uh, my son came home and he was all excited and uh, has a lot going on out there so he's got a lot of energy and uh, so I just wanted to get in here a little quieter setting um, but let's talk about training to failure and what this study represents. So what they did was they took a group of guys basically who had not trained for six months prior to the study and put them through uh, four different groups. Um, and the four different groups would kind of represent all different variations. So a high intensity group and a low intensity group. And then within each group, they had a group that would train to failure at a high intensity and a low intensity. And then they had a group that would train to uh, just short of failure at high intensity and low intensity and then they kind of took the results and uh, You can you can read more in depth about how the study was done and like the specifics of it uh, You know, they used a, a leg extension unilateral So one leg at a time and they did all kinds of things like uh, you know measurements and and strength testing to kind of get their results the consensus across the board was was pretty much that there was not a whole lot of difference between the two groups uh, as far as any of the parameters were concerned. But there was a lot of, in my opinion, specific to what we do as far as you know, building muscle for long periods of time and training for long periods of time. 
there's a lot of unanswered questions, which is what's great about these studies is, and, and you'll see from uh, Greg Knuckles' review of this article, like his suggestion for what should come next. And that's a great thing about these, these reviews of these articles, uh, these studies, is that not only do they take a look at what's going on, what the mechanisms are, and explain them in a manner that's very easily digestible, but they also make suggestions on what could potentially come next for this process and for this research. And that's something that uh, I can really get behind. And uh, so I just wanted to give my opinion based on what this article says and then based on my anecdotal evidence and um, what I, as a coach, suggest when it comes to training to failure. I consider training to failure a tool in the toolbox. You see, if if training close to failure or training to failure produces similar results, then a lot of that's going to come down to what your program design is based on. Training to failure is a great way to make progress, especially under time crunches, right? So ultimately what's going to make the most impact is your total training volume. So if you're in a situation where you do less training volume because you go to failure on the first set and subsequently you're not able to complete as many reps and you create muscle damage so you can't train as frequently or you are unable to train at high intensities because of going to failure, then it might not be the best thing. But the example that I would like to use and to possibly suggest to people is adding failure into a program at appropriate times. So my favorite time to add failure to a training program is when we're doing an exercise and we're on the final set, okay? And I'll start with the final set of the entire day. Then from there, I might start adding it to the sets earlier in the training session. But what I don't want to happen is, let's say well, the first exercise of the day is a deadlift and we're doing a couple sets on deadlift to failure. Now that fatigue is going to set in and make your entire rest of your training session suffer, especially if you're not adapted to that. However, if we do our deadlifts and stop prior to failure, then do our whole workout, but finish the workout, let's say it's a leg day, with some leg curls to failure, well then you're not having such an impact on the performance of the session and you're able to get more training volume in, more high quality reps in, and a little bit less risk of injury because as you know, as you get fatigued, uh, form breakdown tends to happen more commonly, not only from the physical stress, but also the mental stress of that session. So what I really like to do is start to, as training volume in a person's program starts to increase, that's when I like to add drop sets. That's when I like to add training to failure. Intensity techniques like this can augment an already well-designed training program. Another thing is when time is of the essence. There are days when I have to go to the gym and I have to get all my workout done in 30 minutes or less uh, just because life happens. And let's say I want to do back and biceps that day, right? Well, one great way to get a workout in with a lot of volume is to do things like training to failure and drop sets because I can do one exercise literally crush it all the way through to the end till I can't do any more reps, then move on to another exercise, hitting the back from a different variation or a different angle. And while yes, I'm going to be fatigued, I'm going to be training at such a short period of time that I'll actually reduce the load and allow myself to get a lot of volume in a short period of time. Whereas when I'm training at a higher intensity or closer to my one rep max, like 80 or 90%, I'm gonna to need to take longer breaks between sets. So this is where I think training to failure and intensity techniques of that nature become very valuable. So what I don't wanna do is tell you guys you should only train to failure or never train to failure, okay? Because both answers can be right and both answers can be wrong in certain situations. What's best for you is to look at the situation, look at what's going on and understand that Training to failure is a tool in your toolbox. There's another really cool side effect that we probably won't talk about because it's, you can't really quantify it, and that's the pump. Let me tell you something. Sometimes it's fun to get in there and crush the weights uh, until your muscles are basically popping out of your skin, right? Doing things like drop sets and failure sets, it's a good feeling. And let's not discount the psychology of getting in the gym and actually enjoying what we're doing, enjoying the results, ripping off our shirt, going in the locker room, hitting a few poses and looking like we've actually put on five pounds of muscle. Yeah, sure, that pump's gonna fade away. And for that purpose, a pump might not be the best thing for building muscle, but 
if you see yourself looking that way and it gets your butt in the gym more frequently and gets you excited about the progress that you're making, well, who's to say the pump isn't just as valuable as any other tool in our toolbox? And that's where things have to become a little bit more intuitive. And as we go from beginner to advanced to, you know, super advanced to someone who's been training like as long as I have for 20 plus years, I've got a lot of tools at my disposal. I walk in the gym and I have a lot of things I can choose from. Sometimes I may choose to back off. Sometimes I may choose to go crazy. Sometimes I might be training uh, for a purpose, but I've got all these tools at my disposal and that's ultimately what we wanna do. And that's where these uh, articles from Mass are gonna be super helpful because you're going to be understanding the mechanisms and how you should implement things and experimenting and moving forward in your coaching of your athletes or in the programming or training of your programs. These are tools that I simply apply to my training programs, my philosophies all the time. And it's because I as an athlete, I as someone who's been exposed to all these things have the benefit. And the cool thing is, is with this subscription to mass, I am going to be able to continue to augment my education. I'm gonna be going to school at USF we're gonna be giving money to Dr. Campbell and the USF Physique Enhancement Lab. It's going to be fantastic. So I appreciate you guys listening to me ramble. Hope you guys have an awesome Monday. And uh, if you click on the link below, it's gonna to go to a good cause and I appreciate every single one of you. Let's have an awesome week, guys. Talk to you soon.